Now let's take a look at one more set of standing wave envelopes. These are from three important examples. The top one is a matched line. In that case, the load is equal to the characteristic impedance. This is a short-circuited line, and that's when the load is zero. And here is an open-circuited line where the load is infinity. So take a look at what the standing wave envelope is in all cases. Look at this matched line. What is Vmax? Right here, Vmax is this value of V0 plus every place along the line. And what's the minimum value? Well, Vmin happens to be the same thing. So the standing wave ratio for a matched line, this case right here, is going to be Vmax divided by Vmin and that is going to be 1. So the standing wave ratio for a matched line is 1. Let's see what the standing wave ratio is for the short-circuited line. For the short-circuited line, it's going to be Vmax right here and Vmin right there. Vmax is 2 times V0 plus and Vmin is 0. The standing wave ratio for a short-circuited line is infinity. Let's see what it is for an open-circuited line. Here's our Vmax, and here's our Vmin. Once again, this is 2 V0 plus divided by 0, and our standing wave ratio for an open-circuited line is infinity. So the smallest value of SWR is 1 the largest value of an SWR is infinity. In the case of the largest value, it means that all of the wave is reflected back, in phase or out of phase, as the case may be, but all the wave is reflected back. So a high SWR corresponds to a high magnitude of the reflection coefficient. Now I'd like to consider one more thing. Let's just draw our own standing wave ratio pattern right here. Now let's consider the location of Vmin and Vmax. This first top box is for a short circuit. That's the envelope of the standing wave for a short circuited transmission line. The location of Vmin is right here, and the location, oh, sorry, location of Vmax is right there. The location of Vmin is right here. Now what we're interested in is their location. We're going to call this L max and let's call this L min. L max is the distance from the load, the end of the transmission line, to the location of the first voltage maximum. L min is the location from the load to the first voltage minimum. Let's look at it for an open circuit. For an open circuit, our first voltage maximum is right here, so that's kind of L max. You'll find another L max right here corresponding to this V max. So there's L max. And actually, we had a little L min up here too. So here is L min. And frankly, there's going to be another one right out here. We're interested in being able to find the locations of the voltage minima and the voltage maxima. In order to do this, we need to know the reflection coefficient. Remember, that's a complex value. It's going to have a magnitude of the reflection coefficient, e to the j, phase of the reflection coefficient, or writing that another way, we might say the magnitude of the reflection coefficient with the phase of the reflection coefficient. In that case, L max the distance from the load to the first voltage maximum is theta r, the phase of the reflection coefficient, plus 2, 2 pi n over 2 beta. Beta, remember, is still 2 pi divided by the wavelength, and this value n right here is any integer. It goes from 1, 2, 3, etc if theta is less than 0, and it goes from 0, 1, 2, etc. if theta r is greater than or equal to 0. So what this means, just like we see here, the location of Vmax 